Oh man, I, come on! I'm, I'm I'm trying to get the expender to catch the creaky chair. Give me a minute. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, I had a microphone. Whatever the hell else? We I was so excited because we have not Pedro here with us this week. We have uh, Pedro's uh, stunt double, the first person in the show's history. To wear a white polo shirt. It's actually blue, but you know, whatever. Close enough, man. We can't deal with the constantly <laughs> changing background, but it is Next glorious. Time I have a tie to go with it. <laughs> yes, if you've been around for a while, that is one empty. You might know him from Shot Realm, creator of our Shot Pod, Tian, and of course Jordan Swagen. I'm Vince Toon. here at LGC, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel, helping us form cocaine Voltron now. Has anybody been up to anything fun? I, I can do three pull-ups now. That's that's my exciting news for this week. Where did you start? Uh, I started at zero, and I worked up to three. Three? I haven't done a pull-up in a decade. I'm going to go with... <laughs> overhand or underhand? Uh, overhand. Mm. I think I always do mine overhand. I just had to do that mental, like, yep, that way. Yeah, I think, like, underhand is more of, like, a, like a chin-up. So, but yeah. possibly, I'm 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 just happy that now if I'm ever dangling off of a cliff, I can pull my fat ass That's, out. This is where you want to be in life. Yourself. Fucking yeah, one. that's where you want to be. <laughs> like, just in case you want to be like, damn it, we. <laughs> I don't need to be a black belt. Probably should know a couple moves anyway. Know the punch or two, maybe yeah. something like that. Um, uh, Tihan, um, how are things? How are things been since last we spoke? It's it's been a minute. Things are good. I've uh, you know been playing a lot of. Uh, I can't believe it's not uh, Rocket League Golf Racing and Brutal Doom. Had to had to build my own GZ Doom. That was fun. For some reason, it just would crash when it was trying to load the WAD files. So I like how you he, he regaled us with a tale of like I went through all this trouble of building my Rando the Machi Man, Machi Man Savage, Slim Jim. And you, you got to a point you're like, you know what? Fuck this. Hey, you know what? I learned a lot about Blender in that process <laughs> and like UV unwrap and all that that stuff. That was that was really the important part. Now now you have new skills to inflict on new projects. Exactly and. If at some point I can figure out how to generate the GDX without having a Windows VM and all that nonsense, then perhaps we will see the uh, Slim Jim car um, in Trackmania S- someday. Snap but- it in. Okay. Here, here's the tease, though. You can do custom horns, so he can go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be like the Kool Aid Man. Oh yeah, just to fuck with people. <laughs> oh yeah. Possibly. Possibly. Um. I got a blue thing. I picked that up. You might know I'm a huge fan of analog computing. And uh, when I see something show up, of course it was Jim, guitar setter. And uh, I got this guy. A can of Deoxit, 620 ohm, quarter watt resistor. Slap that on the back and uh, the blue thing. It's all vintage and it makes blue thing noises. We're using it right now. What is it? You never heard of it. It is an Orban dynamic sibilance controller. It doesn't like snake jazz. So it fights it dynamically. Yes. There is a circuit programmed to do only one thing in there. And that's fight snake jazz. No, it's... it's, it's. So th- this one has a bit of history, though. I saw you were tweeting. This one was used in, like, Thriller? Not, yeah, not the, this model specifically. But. No, this one. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or or, or I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe you got some, like, Michael Jackson juice on there. Uh, you can never tell. Uh, yeah, this... Uh, yeah, it was, like, doing a little bit of research on it. And... Uh, yeah, the, from the it was in the rack used to create the Thriller album. There it is down there, being all blue and shit. So, Shimona. right? I, I guess uh, Hale Jackson was a had a fair amount of snake jazz. So it's kind of interesting Maybe. because of the way it's designed to handle things. It's sitting in front of a a really cool piece of technology that came out of the '80s called the Effex Compeller, which likes to jazz things up a little bit. And the trick was is finding something that could sit at the end of the chain because your standard DSer is going to grab a frequency and like smash it down. Easy to overload. This thing's designed for that. So, and it also does reamplification to keeping everything nice and level. Oh. And it's doing that with no ICs, man. 
Analog Science electronics amazing. are amazing. It's fucking fascinating what they were able to figure out how to do before. We're like, no, just put this on the FPGA and uh, we'll make it work. Yeah. So there is that. We'll never be able to. I don't know, man. FPGAs have gotten pretty small. We could probably fit one in the horse. Well, we, you can fit one in the horse. There's like a lot of there's a lot of volume there. Whether or not it's going to do anything, the horse is like pure goop technology. It's the steam. Gentlemen, it finally happened. Steam has updated the mobile app. What a loss that bet. You would have told me that was never going to get updated. When was the last time that was updated? Like five, four, three, two years ago, something like that. Uh, we we, we talked time. about it. I think it was, was it was when they split off the chat app. Right. I think. Yeah. I think yeah. That's and that was the was. update. Right. We pulled that out. I'm like, really? Wait, what do you mean by the dollars? And, and um, yeah, this came out I'm like, hey, log into it, play around with it. And you know what? I did. Um, there is currently a testing group for it available for Android, iOS. Uh, damn it. What was the BlackBerry OS? Was it just BlackBerry? I, I think it was uh, yeah. Blackberry OS. Blackberry OS. Oh, man. Uh, Sailfish, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Probably not going to happen. It does. Y- y- Yala. Yala. S- uh, Firefo- Symbian. Firefox OS. Ooh, yeah. deep cut. Not holding yeah. my breath, guys. S- Symbian, Wind- Windows CE. It'll run on your John Deere tractor. <laughs> CE. There we go. So um, run it on my Dreamcast. I tried it out. And out of curiosity, it does work. All you do, there'll be a link in the show notes if you want to try it right there. And... Um, you just upgrade it. It does a thing. You didn't have to do. I had to figure out what my damn Steam password was because I couldn't remember the last time I actually had to type that in anywhere. Once I did, thanks Chrome for remembering all my data. Uh, good, good, lovely data collection hug. Um, I wanted to test. The big thing about this is the ability to trigger the QR thingy, the login. You know, you log into Steam. Steam's like, fuck you. You're not you. Then you got to go to the Authenticator app. Then you got to wait. That notification pops up. Then you got to type it in. To try to simplify things, you're going to be able to wait, grab it, take a picture of the QR code, and you're logged in. That's somehow infinitely simpler. But I wasn't going to trigger that intentionally. So I just had to wait a day. And Valve's like, we're going to trigger it for you. Here you go. I'm like, oh, well, well, here we go. It. I didn't get the QR thing. And the app itself is a bit janky. I mean, slow. That's the common complaint. The common thread from everyone. Not just on my old Amazon 10 tablet that I have in the studio to run Discord and things like Authenticator apps when I'm in here. But on new devices that are apparently made to do all that stuff. But fortunately, I was able to get a regular code because it popped up. I didn't get a QR thing and it says use the code. Which was also fascinating because by the time the app rolled around to give me the digits to punch in, I had maybe, if I'm being generous, three, three and a half seconds left on that cycle for a new one to roll back around. Finally got back in. If you are wondering, still no landscape mode. No. I don't know why. Not not holding my breath on that one either. I'm used to reading all of that sideways and uh, play with it, I guess. I I wanted to take a picture of a QR code. It didn't happen. It's convenient. It's 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 nice for Discord. Um, I've also used like a couple ident- uh, enterprise identity management solutions that do that as well. And you know it's it's convenient because you know I have my authenticator here. It's my phone. Mm-hmm. Take a picture of it, and away you go. So maybe instead of like calling it the Steam Mobile app, they should just call it the Steam Authenticator app. Because like, does it does it include any functionality beyond that that anyone would ever use, especially if now their chat is gone? Well, you you know if you're if you're really hunting those Steam sale deals and you're on on the bus on or the on go. the toilet <laughs> on the toilet and you really need to get that copy of Super Hot for two ninety nine, then you can make at, a purchase at a quarter there. normal speed. Yeah. Did you see what uh, happened? Okay. Side Jack. Uh, oh, I, I, one one nice thing though about about that though is that if you buy through the app, it just gives you the option to be like. Hey, you're logged in on this computer. Do you want to install this game? Right. Yes. Okay, that's that's a neat one that works, isn't it? It yeah. does that from the browser too. When when yeah. you're on another computer, it, so they've got that one figured out at least. I do want to throw this out. Okay, Stop. I learned two things. Squeenix has a store where they sell games, and they even sell Steam games. They were selling Marvel's Avengers for six dollars. 
that 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 tracks because you know they're they're planning on making all that money from like the microtransactions no one's doing that shit anymore please that's, please play that's our not game. the funny part they run out of stock of the like, digital product of, of, digital of, of product. the digital product because i saw that thread on like our game deals and i'm like you know what i'll spend six dollars just to fucking taste test this thing and it was out of stock I, I guess they, they authorized like a thousand keys or whatever. Right. At six ninety nine, and Maybe. then yeah. I don't know, man. I thought it might be a fun title to play on my Steam Deck. Well, you well, if you don't have a Steam Deck, at least you can read the Steam Book. So this is from you know the, the Steam Deck events feed on on Steam dot com link link Steam Community dot com links to all uh-huh. this in our show notes. There we go. Yeah, and. uh because Steam is moving in, or Steam is trying to do a big push into uh, Asia, they're gonna opening or opening up sales for uh, Jap- Japan, Korea, and China. They have put together a, a pamphlet for you, Steam, the the brochure, uh, in order to uh, convey what Steam is and what it's about and what the Steam Deck is about. Um, and you know, I read through it. It's a lot of self congratulatory, you know jerking them off but there's some interesting bits in there um then you you had like a per page breakdown in the notes a little bit i mean this starts off with um you know apparently the best way to use your deck is when you point it directly at a cityscape for some reason yeah. well, at, at the top of a very high building too no. right they yeah, went through all this trouble. in full sunlight and yeah i know it's good wee <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't look so bad if it wasn't like just Photoshop some hens holding the deck and we'll put it up like that. Fine. Whatever works. But yeah, a couple of things in here. Uh, It's going to be coming to Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong. And uh, we do get a mention of the Steam controller at some point. They acknowledge that, hey, we made that. We're not going to make another one. Ha ha ha. LOL. But let's see. Page 18. It's nice. It's nice. PDF 12. It's awesome. So... uh, (laughs) They talk about some things, man. Uh, we will, uh, they'll soon be shipping a general installer for Steam OS, which I'm like, hey, that's nice eventually when that comes out because, you know, even Valve says, like, we, we want other people to make Steam decks and we want you to be able to install it, make your own, you know, Steam Cube. I just want the Steam Cube pre made and a couple of other mentions on 22. I like this. They remind you that, hey, by the way, this is yours. You own this now. Do with it whatever you want. You want to fuck it up? Go for it. We're not going to stop you. Here's the keys to it. Knock yourselves out. And I think one final thing on right at the end, right before the future of Steam Decks. Steam Deck 2, Electric Boogaloo. They talk about, yeah, we're going to make a new one. Of course they are. Uh, Hopefully that's how that works out. And uh, Jordan, they mentioned Chrome OS, which I'd completely forgotten about that. Yeah, we've talked about this a few times on the podcast, uh, Project Borealis the Chrome OS port of Steam. And, you know, because native Linux gaming is dead, we have Proton now. So all of the games that would be running on Chrome OS, which is Linux-based, it's Gen 2, um, will be running through Proton. And here, here, here's what sort of tickles my ball sack a little bit. Um, if Google starts contributing manpower and funding to Proton, that is a very interesting future because it really does seem like with Valve saying, hey, we want other manufacturers to use Steam OS. We're partnering with Google. We're doing all this stuff. They're really taking a shot at Windows. They're 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 really trying to unseat Windows as the default gaming OS. And I think that's I think if they're able to pull that off, uh, and I I think there there's a lot of will within the industry to pull it off because not everyone likes to play nice with Microsoft when they go, especially if they're not planning on being bought out by them. They they don't uh, like to pay that Microsoft tax is what it really comes down to. Although I must say, Steam has been running on Chromebooks for like five years now you could just use crouton and set up a ch root and boom yeah, this, steam this, there you go this, this is more native for support and we're seeing like beefier chromebooks that can actually run. that's what games, i was about though. to say is that yeah, the yeah. gpus in chromebooks have been notoriously weak if you know existent at all for 3d but, but what if i bought a 1200 hundred dollar google chromebook that just can get discontinued after nine months <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah good luck <laughs> Well, like, why, why, why would you trust Google to maintain a service for any extent? I learned my time? lesson. I have exactly one Nexus device. I'm like, learned. I'm out. Yeah, hi, 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 Stadia people who bought in. How's, how's that controller working? Oh man, you better stay out of their subreddit. They'll bite you. Yeah, they will. <laughs> Stadia is the future. They celebrate every new game that's coming out. There's not a lot of posting on that 
I'm ready. Uh, they might they spend try. a lot of their time sharpening their teeth. I um, guess. One last bit of deck-related news, and it is good news if you're still sitting around with money in hand, waiting on your Steam Deck. Just a quick note, deck production has continued to outperform estimates. They're updating shipping windows for the Steam Deck reservation queue. That means uh, you know a bunch of folks, if you're sitting in Q4, October through December, you've been moved up to Q3. How excited are you? Terribly excited. Either that or you're having a panic attack. Because those so, are two valid options. Because you know what? That money might have been fucking spent, oh, as we've shit, already had trust. Like, for it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, yes, uh, that is also a factor. Not only that, but you're like, well, I'm not going to get that until like probably, you know, valve time. Logical thing to think about, right? That's maybe February. I need to have that money to get. What do you mean my reservations do? Hmm. That could be a problem. Now, my when, uh, valve, I, it still does it, man. My pessimism gland just goes into overdrive when I'm reading corporate speak. Doesn't mean who who it's from, man. And you, we, we got to give valve a lot of leeway because they haven't really done anything evil yet and i'm not saying yes. there's anything evil about this but corporate speaks corporate speak because like i like you at home i am you know i want to believe i want to believe that people are just buying the absolute snot out of steam decks and valve got lucky they got their supply distribution chain locked in like hey we're slinging these things out now and it's kind of brilliant distinct possibility distinct possibility however as we talked about, I think week before last, you know, a bunch of people had their existing reservations bumped up last month. And I kind of, what I said in the show, and we got some hate mail feedback. We're like, yep, uh, that happened to me. I got moved up an entire quarter and I don't have the money. So I had, and it could be. That Valve's just kind of sitting around with some extra inventory empty. What do you think about that? Like, do you think that's a possibility or, you know, maybe a little bit of a possibility? Or do you just think Valve has just got the supply chain locked down? I think it's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, I've actually been kind of surprised. Like, several people that I know who are gamers have bought Steam decks that I'd never, ever in a million years would have expected them to get one. So, you know, maybe they are selling pretty well. It's completely anecdotal. Like, I don't have any actual data, but um, I've kind of been surprised by, you know, just, like, random people being like, oh, my Steam Deck came in today. I'm like, huh? A Steam Deck? Okay. I th- yeah, I think, I think more like a, lot a Switch of... kind of person to me. Yeah, and I, and I, I think a lot of people... they got it. A lot of people were hesitant at first, I think, but once like the good review started coming in, people are like, okay, well, this is like an actual thing. It's not like Steam Machines from fucking a decade ago. They actually they actually put some thought and effort into this. It is, and I think the worst thing anybody's been able to say about it, despite really trying with some outlets, and they're like, it's not a finished product. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. That's it's, cool. it's, good, it's good enough, though. Yeah. I can play my games. Uh, now, speaking of games... Uh, Decorporation? Yeah, Decorporation. Uh, supposedly a fast-paced Kafka-esque roguelike uh, where you go and beat up a bunch of people in an office and sometimes it goes to crazy neon LSD mode. Um, I don't know. I get, look at, Looking at the footage here, I got, I, oh, man. I got, I got some big-ass super hot vibes from this, but it's more like we got, we got super hot at home. Like If you notice, if you're watching the video version, the grip on the handgun is like the loosest, like Lego man <laughs> grip to like yeah. GI Joe Kung Fu grip. It's it's actually pretty funny. Um, but you know, it's fifteen percent off now. You can pick it up for two dollars, two eighty eight Canadian. So, mm. hey, roguelike, randomized, you know, shooter. Why not? You can murder people in an office, pretend they're your coworkers. Mm. Ah, two fifty four regularly, but not so edgy. Uh, I don't know. This this reminds me of a uh, imagine like uh, yeah, super hot meets Stanley Parable, but with more gun. And I only say Stanley Parable because there's like the flat ass shading in the uh, cubicles and stuff like that. What do we need mm-hmm. to run it? Uh, four gigs of RAM, Intel UHD, not too much. And is this the first potato. outing from Cube Potato Games? Let's find out. Let's uh, yes, yes, yeah. it is. All right. You know what? It looks a. Uh, Good. To what you were saying, oh. Jordan. I mean, it looks a bit first gameish, but I mean, it's priced accordingly. Yeah, hmm? it's very, very Unity feel to it. But you know, who knows? Well, I saw the color thing, and I'm like, oh, did you fuck up a shader? And be like, yes, that's the look. <laughs> but, it's not well, a bug; it's a feature. 
Oh no no! I I I I I will bet you like a nickel that so, that was originally a graphical glitch, and then they're like, "Oh, I actually kind of like this. I'm gonna keep it in the game." Hey, if I mean, if it works, it works. Now, yar recharged. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, from very, the team, very little oh. from the team that brought you basic mass recharged. We're here. The future is now. Uh, you might remember this if you're a certain age. I mean, I've played it. It was definitely a thing, but it was kind of old hat even when I was a kid because 2600 was on its way out because we had those fancy NES systems floating around. But I want to know where yours like the early years are, you know, because this, this just kind of comes as, uh, hey, we've kept the core game clay. I guess you don't want to fuck with a classic, though, do you? Like, there's no way to win. Like, yeah, you're only going to lose remaking like things that have been around for 40 plus years. I, I don't know. Doom 2016 did it pretty well. They like modernized the 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 classic Doom formula, but still like it's it's still recognizably Doom. So hmm. kept kept the heart and soul, but changed the uh, the action around a little bit. This seems like a nostalgia grab to me. Well, it's, the, you it's, know, game was in development, and then Atari was like, "Hey, we want to do a Yars thing," and they're like, "Oh, we can, well, we can slap some moth graphics on it." You say you say that, but this is actually uh, done by uh, a team uh, that was developing this for the VCS. This is published by Atari. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, okay. yeah. Makes perfect I, sense. I, uh, lo- lo- local local multiplayer only because, you know, Ataris don't have... You, you can't connect via Network. DARPANET to, to your other Atari 2600. Here's a real question. Uh, the VCS, I went looking because the only thing this reminded me of, I did a bit of research on it, and I'm like, oh, they have like an entire like the VCS catalog that they went back and remade a bunch of games like this. Very much like, oh, that's that game with the new graphics, but everything else is the same. How much, you two, you can cheat all day, how much does the VCS, A, my first question was, did they ever actually mass produce the VCS? I mean, could you, ever, can we just go buy one, followed yeah. by how much? And apparently you get one today, right now, for three ninety nine from Best Buy. That's a little much. I, I'd You're pay right. like, I'd pay it's 300 the same on for Amazon. One. And you can only get the black one. No, the like classic woody styled ones yeah. just are like that was a limited run. Mm, and now so. they have a warehouse full of these things they can't sell, which is why this game is available on Steam as well. I, I got I got one question though. What the hell does this have to do with Denise Crosby? Help me out. Uh, Tasha Yar? Oh. Taking no. her revenge on the black slime. That's a big yeah, blue, I mean that's blue. that's one yeah, of the later yeah. levels that they don't show in the demo. Right. Yeah, the, the 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 electrified armus. All right. <laughs> does the uh, VCS even have a network port on the back? I think it does. Yeah, because it yeah. has to like download. And it definitely games. has Wi-Fi too. Oh. Huh. Well, like it, it was it was an APU system. Like I wanted one for the hardware to like run just regular. Aspects Everyone on. wanted one to play with right until the Steam Deck came out. You're like, Pfft. well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of what it's it's the Steam brick. It's kind of what you wanted, right? Kind of, but not as powerful as the Steam Deck. So I want yeah, the Steam Deck. That, break. that was the thing. Everyone wanted one until they saw the specs and the price tag, and we're just like, "Oh, no. never mind." All right, uh, Rune Teller, early yeah. access RPG action indie adventure. What's not to love, man? Uh, uh, the, yeah. the, the the parents A lot of maybe. Come on, gentlemen. I mean, look at it. It's done in that art style. We we have Elden Ring at home, you guys. Uh, well, I mean, what if you had Elden Ring and, like, not Minecraft? Maybe? You got wizards Mid- and shit. And lightning. Yeah, the, wi- wi- wizards and lightning and shit. That's all you what need. What the hell was that supposed to be? Fire. What? Hey! It's it's the buddy Christ. Look at the Wiggle Wolf. Wiggle Wolf. <laughs> oh, you, 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 can, you can be a Wiggle Wolf? I or guess, is that, man. like, a hat? I, I went through I this. Know. No, here's here's the saving grace of this. This is Rune Teller. It does have online co-op. I'm saying there there might be a chance of, like, playing around with it. And uh, the combat looks a bit rough because what you're seeing in the trailer there is kind of the best of the best. I mean, you run around, you boop, some numbers show up over people's heads. uh, It's got one of those circle things for the moves. I mean, it doesn't look bad, really. I mean, if you don't mind the uh, flat shaded virtual fighter. Yeah, it doesn't look bad for five years ago ish, 10 years ago. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. If 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 the gameplay is solid, that's really all that matters, right? right. Like you you, you, can, you can say it's a stylistic choice. Uh, may, maybe it's a compromise so that like they can make more of the game without having to make it super detailed, right? And we should point out it's an early access. I mean, it's it looks better than EverQuest too. Yes. 
but are that's more setting people a very, very very low bar. There, there are. I'm sure. I don't know. I don't mind it. They got a Discord, and uh, I don't know. It's a sad guy with a fire. I, you know what? If they release like a weekend free, because man, I, I haven't tangled with. What was the last two MMO each of you played? Ooh, that was, that was the the Camelot one we did for the show. Uh no, no, not not show material one. Eve Online. Eve Online. Well, I guess Elite is Elite. probably it. Yeah. Elite Dangerous. Oh, oh wait, no. I, I played I played that Shadowrun MMO with Sandy. And yeah, uh Foxy's right. I did play Temptem for an hour, and that that counts. <laughs> that was show content though. <laughs> Alright, that's show content, so that doesn't count. Alright. Man, uh uh, I'd probably have to dial it all the way back to Reginum. Mm. Which is available on Steam these days, by the way. Reginum. Yeah. Go rock it out. That's going to do it for our Steamy segment, though. Yeah, coming up next, we got a Switch Killer, boys. It's coming <laughs> It's coming to steal all your Switch games, except you can't run it's them the on the wrong kind of Switch Ooh, Killer. Boom. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Welcome back to the news segment. Yeah, I, I, w- I wasn't sure who it was going to cut to. We probably should have talked about that. But we didn't because we are professionals, uh, professionally funded by you lovely people supporting us every week by heading on over to patreon.com. Wrong button. Shut up, professional. Linux- All that so professionalism professional. threw me oh off, Oh, my man. God. Oh, my God. Ten, ten years doing it, man. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Fund our buttons. You can get access to our uh, Discord channel. You can get access to our show notes. Uh, you can RSVP to game streams if you want to play Trackmania and Turbo Golf Racing with Ven and sometimes Empty on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm going to try and do more Back for Blood on Thursdays. So if you want to play more Back for Blood with me and maybe Ven, I don't know, maybe Empty. I don't, I don't know. He's probably not going to be around. He's busy. He's a busy guy. Um, but yeah, you can you can RSVP to that by getting into our Discord, which you can also get by uh, subbing to us here on twitch.tv slash Linux Game Cast. We really do appreciate all the support. Uh, you get your name in the credits. We say it uh, as we try to read it in the very fast, hard to read Star Wars scroll. Um, do we have it? We also preview some uh, videos coming down the pipe. Ven, do we have any new interfacing Linux stuff coming up? Oh, man, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the expander to catch the creaky chair. Give me a minute. I'm sorry. That, that me, was guys. my. That, I swear. That, yeah, those, that was my knees. Oh, was, man. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we got a bunch of things. Like, anytime I'm working on interfacing Linux or anything like that, I always like to put those out a little bit early. Give you a taste of them, a little behind the scenes. That's what I did with the last one. With the, the army people AI point no out problem. any editing errors to you? Editing errors, grammatical errors, or I'll just walk you through the entire DaVinci Resolve session. Like, hey, this is how you make one of these. I like doing things like that. And hopefully, you know, you might accidentally learn something. So don't pay too much attention. And um, yeah, it's cool. Thanks for your support. We got wish list. Head over to linkschemecast.com. You can get your name on this board, or you can buy Jordan a fog machine that he uses on a regular basis. I still need the propylene glycol. You got it. Glycol. I still need to like buy some. <laughs> I actually have, I actually have it set up and like unboxing everything. Oh man. I just need to fill it up. <laughs> a little extra ambiance. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, empty. How, how hard would it be to write a trigger on Twitch to activate, um, a smoke, me a smoke machine. machine. <laughs> It can be done. That's that's what we need, like fucking IoT spoke machines. I'm just saying, man, and like, you know, have it pointed somewhere like directly at your face. I I mean, I mean, if they do have an IoT smoke machine, I'll I'll definitely throw that on my wish list. You can get to those by uh, heading on linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. Ven has one. And if you buy stuff off of it, you can send us a note we got to read. Or you can, if you send Ven stuff, get your name in lights. Shiny lights like Aldius and Linux Nuru and Noctilus and J. Just J. Can only see the J part. Just J. Just J. Uh what what else we got? Yeah, we got that store, store.lexgamecast.com. Buy some t-shirts, buy some stickers. Mm-hmm. Coffee mugs. Uh, coffee coffee mugs, mugs, yeah. Indeed. How's the um, um how's the cod piece coming along? Is that is that up there yet? Uh we gotta get the yoga pants uh design. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah and that. also also the FDA approvals being a bit of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious as it looks. <laughs> we yeah. gotta make sure it's not too much of a choking hazard. Yeah. So check this out, ladies and gentlemen. We got a brand new Linux handheld coming to take on 
really not the deck or anything like that. Uh, we're talking about the Odroid N2 Plus. I wasn't excited about this until we get down to the price, man. Um, $111 will be able to get you this gaming juggernaut. Let's take a look at uh, what did that? Wow. All right. It shrunk. Um, Zoom and enhance. Right. It's going to be running 2004. <laughs> The Buntus, uh, two gigs of DDR4, you know, LP DDR4, quad core arm, A35, five inch screen. And apparently you can get away with doing, uh, you know, slightly better than you might think with this. Uh, N64 PS1 era gaming, GameCube is going to be available for this. And uh, as Jordan and I were talking, the pre pre super shows, and I mean, look at that design, man. Look I mean, at that thing. That is, that is, oh, that is, that is, uh, that's a charge cable. <laughs> oh boy. Pure engineering aptitude if i've ever seen it uh so what are all the ataris game boys uh, mega drives nest pc engine sega cd n64 dreamcast and gamecube but again let's go back to 111 dollars, which is very much in the fuck it i'm just gonna buy one play with it see what i can do with it it doesn't look bad does it no, it, it doesn't. You have a couple case options, and, you know, because it's all Odroid shit, you can 3D print your own stuff. This isn't going to be, like, too difficult to disassemble. And, yeah, for for a handheld emulation box, this is a pretty good deal. Um, do they have uh, they have word on, like, availability of when, like, it's actually going to go on sale, or? Yeah, October. October. Ooh. No, they didn't say which year. Okay. Right. Well, my, my, <laughs> my birthday is in October, so I'll get it for a birthday eventually, maybe. All right. Maybe. Uh, we were talking about like handheld gaming. You are the one out of everyone I know that you're like, no, I do the handheld gaming thing. I do. Yes. You do. And you're the one that's like, meh, not really big on the switch. Not against it, but you're not like chomping at the bit to get one. You weren't first in line by any stretch of the imagination. No, I, I, I wasn't. I was, I, I got, I got it for mostly playing Pokemon games so I can pay $90 every two or twice a year, I guess to Nintendo. We'll get, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I just like having the option. I, I like, um, like if I'm sitting on the bus or in a car or just on the toilet, just being able to pop out a game and play some stuff. Empty, you actively give away your handheld systems. So I do. Yeah. I do. This is not I mean, the price is really compelling. The two gigs of RAM kind of gives me a little pause. And I didn't really see anything about battery life in there, so I'm guessing it's not gonna be amazing. It's gonna uh, it's gonna charge slowly. That's what they did say for sure. Unless you use both the USB A <laughs> and C. Well, they, they said it <laughs> mitigates the slow charge, so I'm gonna assume it charges like slightly faster than the speed of smell. Let's be real. It might, man. Uh, but then again, I mean, if you, it depends on what you're using it for. Yeah, if you're playing your N64, your PlayStation Era One, GameCube games, yeah, it's gonna nope your battery quick. But if you're playing like I don't know Mario World, probably yeah, not. Uh, yeah, I want, I want to play Final Fantasy while I'm taking a dump. That's that's just kind of it. Reading on a five five inch screen, <laughs> dude. I, I used to play that shit on Game Boy. I'm used right. to it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, what you're probably in reality going to be doing is getting your Steam Deck and using it to uh, maybe play some GameCube games. Maybe, um, but uh, it, you you could do that already with uh, Dolphin through Retroarch. But what you couldn't do is play them uh, Wii U games. That's why you needed Simu. Previously only available uh, through uh, Patreon uh, and Windows only. But uh, well, you could download the older versions, and it did surprisingly run well under one. It did, yeah. It was because it was it was mostly using like OpenGL under the hood, so. Uh, you know, there's that. But uh, Simu 2.0 got announced, and uh, because of some developer burnout, uh, it is going open source. Um, yeah, so the the there's a there's a bit of a blog post or a bit of a Reddit post where the guy goes on and says like, "Hey, uh, I've wanted to do other stuff. This is taking up a lot of uh, time. Uh, I don't have the time I want to focus on it. Uh, so you know, here we're gonna we're gonna open source it. And lo and behold, within like a day of it being open source, there's already a bunch of pull requests in the GitHub for like, here's how we're improving Linux support. Here's the Fedora build instructions. Here's the Arch build instructions. Um, so that's that's always good to see. Um, and yeah, like more and more emulators running natively on Linux is always a good thing in my book. And you know, hey, there's no emulator detecting DRM on Wii U games, so go nuts. Mm. Yeah, the build process on this thing still looks a little bit uh, janky. One, one of the big notes is it requires a 
file sys or a case insensitive file system oh, to build. No. I was just like, mm, maybe not right now. We'll let them. We'll let them patch that out. And well, then, hang on, uh, hang on. Isn't there a uh, switch you can flip an EXT for now? You gotta, you gotta there, format there it with be. case. Oh, you have you to format do. it to be case insensitive to begin with. You can't just add oh, it. Yeah. Yes. Well, that that's just a better reason to uh, format uh, your Linux devices within TFS now, isn't it? V-fat. Yeah, there, there's a kernel driver, right? That that that's still being maintained. Supposedly. Well, they well they dumped the code the one time and like poof, a smoke bomb. Yep. Wasn't I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm excited about this because uh, just preservation. You know, I mean, it does read like play Bayonetta. Maybe the dude get burnt out on it, and you know he brings up that eh, not a lot of people care about the Wii U right now. So maybe it really wasn't like financially viable, and instead of just you know taking all of his toys and going home, he's like, I'm going to open source this because I've been saying I was going to open source it any day now for like 13 years. I think also having a Patreon puts a lot of pressure on him to constantly be churning it out, and that definitely would contribute to burnout, especially when you're a solo developer on a right. fairly yeah. big project. And uh, he also mentions that a lot of it is just like he wants to keep it to himself because it was like his pet project. But you know, once once you know you get to a certain level of user base, single single developer doesn't really scale. So mm. unless your software scared. grows up and matures, you gotta you gotta let it go. Yes. And you know what? You best. might be using your Wii U emulator a lot more in the upcoming uh, years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, at least not not for any old games, but for maybe some new games. <sighs> De nuvo, everyone's favorite anti-cheat wah, DRM wah, wah. Uh, software offering company. Uh, they they have uh, they're they're working on a uh, new switch emulator protection, which uh, will detect if games are running in an emulator and you know stop you from playing them. Because you know uh, we, I brought this up in the pre pre super shows and people wanted to, when Metroid Dread came out, people really wanted to play it, but they wanted to play it on their big TVs at UHD. Unfortunately, with your Nintendo Switch, you got your options of 720p 60 in a handheld and 1080p 30, sometimes more like 1080p 24 on the big screen, uh, even though the game was more than capable of doing so. So the guys working on Yuzu were able to create a 4K patch. It worked great. Uh, Nintendo was not pleased, and um, Denuvo is hoping to uh, capitalize on that by uh, making sure that games will only run on official Switch hardware. It always baffles me, like, why companies like this exist. I mean, I, I know why, intellectually. It, it's execs making decisions to integrate these products, not the designers, but... Here's, and here's the thing. Uh, we, we've already seen uh, performance impacts for Denuvo in PC games. Doom 2016 was a big one. Uh, and I don't think the Switch has horsepower to run complex emulator detecting DRM and a game at 29 frames a second. I would think the easiest thing Nintendo could do to curb piracy is maybe drop the prices of their games by like 20 bucks. Tell me more about this fantasy fic you're working on. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, yeah. that doesn't sound I, like the um, Nintendo I know. Oh, I'm, I'm not. Say, I'm not saying they're gonna do it. I'm just saying, you know, if they got a problem, I got. A, I got an easier solution for you. I do want to say. I mean, we're all in agreement that this is like some grade C minus bullshit. Period. Like 100. percent And but there is the saying like we're only going to be marketing this towards indie developers, which I can say indie developers like we're broke enough as it is, fuckos. So how about no? I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Slap another licensing fee on top right. of that. Right. I, I can definitely see some like Neo Dodge bullet on that. We're not necessarily worried about it. And, you know, I'm really curious to see how they plan on trying to market this to game devs because, you know, Dunovo is only going to be good for a couple of months at the beginning. It's going to get you that day one, like slow some people down, hopefully, sometimes, occasionally. But Scott brought up a, um, Scott from Chat Room on our Discord brought up a point. I was like, wait a minute. Fuck. Uh, that might be a valid point, Steam Decks, because how many times have we said Valve just released the best Nintendo Switch on the market? It's Switch true. Pro or whatever you want to call it. And because yeah. yeah, the topic was like, why would Nintendo even get around? I was like, yeah, yeah, I could, I, I could uh, see people uh, Nintendo going, whoa, well, well, how go? You just do that, and then it just starts working. My, huh. my, mind you, most of the time, any game that you can find on the Switch eShop that's mm -hmm. an indie game, you can find on Steam for a lot cheaper. So I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, yes, that might be that might be a good, uh, valid take, but I don't know realistically how that would play out. I I don't even know what it's about. Like, especially going after like 
Nintendo's like, oh, we don't want to necessarily want anything to do with it. We're not going to be putting it on our first party titles. And, you know, to what Jordan was saying, like, does the Switch have the horsepower and extra RAM for that? No. Probably uh, not. No. I mean, it's a bad experience, like it or not. Uh, gaming on the Switch is a very serious compromise to the point where games like The Witcher 3 is a technical fucking marvel that or they were able to effectively, yeah, rewrite Skyrim. the damn game, yeah, to make it yeah. work in any way, shape, form, fashions. And there's huge, huge trade offs. And to what you were saying, people want to play it at UHD and they want to play it at 60 FPS. And shit like that's just going to get in the way. And the one thing we know about anytime we run into De Novo is eventually it goes away. So why don't we just cut the middleman out here and not put it there in the first place? Gotta but get those money. day one sales. Money, money, money. Well, I, I, that, that, that entire argument like is so asinine too because it's like the people who can't pirate the game on day one are not going to you know say, ah, I've been defeated. Good job, De Novo. I You have earned my $80. No, they're going to go play something else they can pirate. The people are on the fence. Like Decisions like this, products like this don't exist unless this is, there's a market. De Novo has been around long enough to, I think, prove that there is a market for protecting your day one sales. Like, you got to have some metrics backing that up. They're like, okay, we're about to give you all this fucking money from a AAA publisher. And they're like, can we get some numbers, De Novo? And they're like, no, you just got to trust us on this, bro. Take our word for it. Yeah. I don't think it works like that. Uh, well, you know, you could you could always write an anti-cheat DRM solution in v, v script, right? You know? <laughs> Not anymore. Godot 4.0 is finally dropping the visual scripting editor that... I don't know, having used Godot a bunch, I wasn't even aware existed. <laughs> As we collectively go, huh, that was really all, all this whole time, Really, huh? no wonder they're dropping it, because, okay. uh, no, oh, it was introduced to Godot 3, that would explain it. Um, GD script isn't that bad. It's really a nice, simple language, and anyone who can click a bunch of pieces together in a visual editor can probably figure out the, uh, the GD script syntax. And then the other big part of this that was immediately obvious to me was um, one of the amazing things about Godot is the library of examples and demos that they've built up over the years. It's huge, and they have examples of how to do everything that you can possibly do in the engine. And Damn it, exactly zero got a higher of those. market share than Linux. <laughs> exactly <laughs> zero of the examples used Visual Script. So, bye. R.I.P. I don't know. I had good luck. So your, long, your farewell, reaction. and good night. I didn't know there was a visual scripting in there. I mean, it's going to be GD script. GD script's a better fucking product. Um, and you know that's what you should be picking up after playing around with something like Scratch. Yeah, you know, or, or if you know C sharp, they also have a uh, C sharp language plugin for Godot. Right. So do well, it that the- way. And uh, they were saying in, in this post that like stuff like Unity and Unreal has like a lot of system level integration with these visual scripting tools that the Godot people just never got around to doing because no one was using it. No one asked for it. So, yeah, why, why keep it around? I think like people asked for it and they thought it was they thought it would be a good idea and then realized, oh, wait, this is not working out. Let's cut our losses. I want to hear because um, if you've ever had to play around with Unreal Engine 5, you're familiar with our friend Blueprints. So I want to see what people's take are. Like, if you've never messed with GD script, go tangle with it, play around with it. But I do want to know if this is going to get rid of visual shader, which I think is a fair question to bring up. No, I think they said that they're not getting so, rid of that. I don't know. GD script it is. And once you get that figured out, you can go into something fancy like Python. Play a real language. Yes, a real language. Rust. Got to do everything in Rust now. No, no, Rust no, up. You- you re-implement Godot and Rust. <laughs> no, you, you 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 transpile your Python into Rust, and then <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's what you got. Uh, uh, then then, you then, then, it then, to in, then into the flight script. simulator. See, I, I've already shut up on that because we wish too much of this bullshit into existence, man. Uh, let's just go over ahead. YS Flight. Who's heard of that? Does that name even ring a bell? No. If you've been around for a long, long time. It just might, because we didn't have much back in the day. And I'm talking back in the day, 2004. I remember when this first showed up on Linux. And that's a flight simulator. And it's been around for a long time. They, uh, we, we just didn't have much game. So a game, or if it was a simulator, and this wasn't as like hard-nosed a simulator as Microsoft deal was. It was something that you could pick up and play in an afternoon and all that. But 
we had it on Linux and it was native. And 18 years later, the developer said, I, I had two Still life goals. Kicking. Two life goals. He's like, I wanted to make um, something that hundreds of thousands of people have played and uh, another one. I forgot what the other one was. You, you wanted to make a flight sim. Yeah, oh, that, was, okay. that, that was straight up. But Nailed it. Turned out he's just gotten too busy to maintain the project. And this is another example of let's set it free. So here it is. You can download it, access the source code, and do what you will to it because it is there to play with, which I did. I downloaded it. I'm like, okay, fine. You know, you clone two gets, you go in, make sure you go into the YS flight. God, I, my brain missed that part. I'm like, what's go? Oh, right. I got to go into that directory. Fine. I'll do it. And of course it aired out online. Um, like 103 of the make file was no one. I was like, I don't nice feel like opening a make file, but I tried. And it got uh, to the very end too, which was like 100% complete make file error 103. Like, uh, no. It's probably trying to copy something and yeah. from some other yeah. file location. Yeah, and the, the story behind this is also pretty pretty neat because they, uh, uh, number one, they asked him for the sauce, Captain Yeast. This is the guy, uh, and he said yes. He's just like, yeah, you know, you guys can have it. Also, apparently, like this started in 1998, which is you know crazy. That's a very very old software project, very long lived. Um, apparently, this is the this is based off of the 2018 release. Uh, which, I mean, you know, it's yeah. long been known for its stellar graphics, Jordan. Um, I mean, it looks like a game that was made in the nineties. Yeah. Um, and I, but again, if, if people like it, if it's like a casual flight sim and people, people are into it, then, you know, go for it. Right. And now, now, Hey, the source is available. You can make, someone can make it look pretty. They can, they can fix that. Don't man, no red counting. Don't red count my history, uh, man. I, I, I'm I'm curious how something like this uh, stacks up to like X plane. Yeah, and you're gonna be real yeah, curious when you're trying not. to get your fucking Cessna off the ground and a fucking X fighter goes flying by, man. X wing. Serious. The the part of all of this that I enjoyed the most was he apparently hacked up an iOS version of it and built it, and it worked. And then he went to show his students and the, the build had expired or whatever because he was in the free dev mode at Xcode. I was just like, yep, that, that sounds about right for all of my experience in the Apple ecosystem where they are just like brutal to the developers. And he also says, he's like, I didn't want to have to buy a MacBook to develop for iPhone. So Right. Oh, man. I think uh, everyone's got a, like Apple. Anybody who's ever had to deal with the Apple app store has a horror story of sorts man just yeah it's not it's not good like i never have but i've heard it from enough people so that's there you can play with it we're gonna bounce out of here though because we finished up with the news but stay tuned coming up next we got some hate mail directed at jordan i know right and welcome back to the hate mail section of did you really have to make a noise right at the beginning god damn it uh, sorry. Yeah. We, it's we not my fault. It. It's my chair. I don't know, man. That chair is shifty and creaky. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Need for <laughs> creaky. This is your chance to write in to us. You can head over to linuxemcast.com, tap the contact button. If you're a developer, read the thing. Just read the thing. Do the thing into that. You can contact us, send us some keys. We might take a look at your game. We might stream it. Come on the show. We'd love to fucking hear from you. If you're working on a game or if you're working on an open source project, we do weekly dailies. Wait. We- we- what? Uh, or you're a member of the Yakuza. <laughs> or you can, okay, I'll add that. Um, crowdfunding campaigns, you know the drill. Make sure you have a working Linux build. And if you're going to send us some spam with some links and stuff like that, which is cool, which is good, uh, our spam golem will fucking nope that out of existence. Use the email address like the marketing people at Rocat do, which sent me an email last night, which is a follow up, the third follow up email from Pedro's review for a Rocat mouse, like fucking five years ago, the fucking email is like, well, I've noticed that, um, you know, there's not a direct link back to Rocat from your site. And, you know, it would really enhance the value to your site uh, if you link directly back to us. And Were they offering you money? No, no. Link- see, yeah, oh, no, sorry. I, 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 mm-hmm. I, got, I, got, I got an email. I mentioned I was looking for a new chair and someone, someone promotional was like, Hey, we're releasing a new line of chairs. Would you like to talk about it? I'm like, are you going to send me one? Right. Silence. 
<laughs> to to what MD we were saying. That is kind of what I'm at. I, I just haven't because because he wrote uh, the last one was like I have a feeling this might not be a monitored mailbox. And I'm like, hmm, I don't want I don't know if I'm gonna fuck with that. So, um, maybe don't, don't give it away. Right? Yeah. yeah, I do want to write back and just like it sounds like you're trying to purchase an ad. Um, <laughs> <question>. <laughs> Press the rate. Respond. Right. Respond with one for. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we do have um, two nice little bits. Now, we were talking about the Iron Price last week on the Iron Show. And David writes in, hmm, did Jordan forget the full connotations of the term paid the Iron Price? Question mark. Happy, crying, laughy face. Anyway, comma, thanks for the fun and informative vids. As always, I personally don't remember what we were on about <laughs> neither neither do i but i will say yes i did fuck that up okay but this is not the first time it has happened on the show and i am not the only one who has confused the gold price and the iron price multiple times so you know I'll, I'll, will, I'll, take, I'll take my lumps if if you want to stay in like canon with the show when we say the iron price that is us saying that we ended up paying retail yeah full 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 price yeah does, but re- 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 really, that should mean that we went and like stabbed Steam in the chest and s- took the game. Maybe it's a good uh, way to get free games. Yeah, uh, to, to, to stab an entire online service in the chest like it's a person. Yeah, this is how it happens, man. This is how it happens. But JP, on something empty, might even be able to speak to. Uh, this is about really dangerous because Jordan likes to remind us that I can't fucking play this game. But every now and then, I get curious, and I still can't play this game yeah. i've been playing yeah. elite dangerous on ge proton 714 for a while still works great thought this is without odyssey oh though this is without odyssey so the code base isn't identical we'll see if that's still true in the following weeks when that oh weeks when it becomes a thing of the past now t head yeah that- so basically what's going on is that elite has two different versions of the game they have horizons and then they added uh vehicles and first person shooter mode and called it odyssey so they've basically had elite dangerous 3 and elite dangerous 4 running side by side for years now at least a year is there a difference Um, in the games or just yes yes there is they can kind of coexist with each other but not really and some features aren't supported in one and like fleet carriers you can't do fleet carriers and horizons but you can in odyssey and how are they anyway uh which one has F-Dev. the uh, better space beds? Well, that's that's why they didn't retire Horizon, was that people complained about a lot of the changes that they made to space uh-huh. for Odyssey. My, my friends and I have been playing both, and Odyssey is just better. And FDev has announced that they're moving Odyssey off of uh, the Elite engine, or whatever you want to call it, 3.0, and moving it to 4.0. So... Soon, hopefully, gonna, both versions of the game will run on the same engine, and I haven't had any problems with it in Proton, but, you know, why am I, I, I just can't log in. Like, I'm, I'm sure if I got into the game proper, it would run fine, but... Do you get the doesn't... launcher? I get, yeah, I get the launcher, and then... And then you click play, and just nothing happens? There is no play button. It asks me to log in, and then I log in, oh, and then nothing happens. that's that's it. Yeah. Now here's the question, uh, TN. You'd know this. Maybe we can troll you a little bit. Uh, is that the same login that you would use on their website? Yeah. Okay, Jordan. Have you tried logging into their website? And yes, resetting your password. And yes, that, and it does work. And it does work. Huh. Hmm. Perhaps it's just from the game. Send them an email. I like. I. I did. <laughs> I can. I can reopen that su- support ticket, but I don't care enough to do that. I'm. I, I I think I think what it actually is is like some thing that ties like the Steam license to the to the 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 license from like uh, Frontiers Industry or whatever. And oh right, what, you what, had like what, a very roundabout way of getting. Yeah, and like because I I got it through Humble, so if some some something fucked up there, I think is the problem. The problem yeah. is when I was dealing with their support, they're like do all this window shit and i'm like but that's not what the fucking problem is <laughs> i don't know how to windows it's not it's not it's not even that like what, what they're asking me is like make sure that .net framework is installed it's like this doesn't matter stop yeah. treating me like a, this is not what the issue is but what 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 whatever whatever maybe it'll magically fix it maybe maybe theories are why don't real. you just I be don't like know. a normal windows user and give them like uh, yeah i i just did that yep 
That's done. Uh -huh. Without yeah, addressing any of that. Yeah, uh, right fi now. fix oh, yeah. my problem. Right. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, you, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know what? It's because I'm an idiot. That's why. Have you tried rebooting? You're rebooting it right now as we're talking. Yep. Yeah, yep. I, I, I have just rebooted it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reply instantly. Rebooted. Done. <laughs> You know what? I, I have the great. Do, do you do that? I'm like, okay, let's, let's see. What about a minute, minute and a half? <laughs> yeah. Then yes. you send the message like, okay. You got you to gotta let him wait a little bit. Oh, I, yeah. 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 I try listen. to sell it to him. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen man, you don't, you don't have a, a monopoly on my time. I will, I will get to it when I have the opportunity. I might be doing something important on my computer. I, I'm not, but I would like you to think that I might be. Right. I, I, I might. You can't assume. And you should. Let's get over it. We both know it's not the problem on the router in the first place, man. Um, cool. We need to get out of here. But, everyone, thank Empty and his squeaky ass chair for showing up. What's the chair's name? Cherry? Squeaky? Squeaky. <laughs> squeaky. There we squeaky. go. Squeaky. Fair enough, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause for one Michael T. Han. But, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vince Stone on Twitter. I'm doing the things there. We have a federated timeline on Mastodon, mass.lettyschemecast.com. And of course, you can always get a hold of me in our Discord, super secret Discord. You can never figure out how to get in there. Or if you're on a live show, or if we're doing a live show, hop into IRC, hop into Twitter, all that's bridged together, and we can have a chat. Yeah, I'm Jordan. I might not be sitting on Mr. Cre Mr. Squeaky, but Mr. I am Creepy. Mr. Creaky. I'm Mr. Creaky. That's that's my knees and my back. Uh, find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool or Twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I am Mike T, aka Empty. Um, you could try to find me on social media, but I don't social media so much anymore. So catch me in Discord. Say what's up. At the find, real leprechaun. Find him in real life. Yeah. Go to his the house. Real leprechaun. That at the real leprechaun technically does exist. I yes. have never checked it. All right, beautiful people. Time for some credits and thanks again, Dan, for um, showing oh, with us all, all the beautiful colors. Like I, <laughs> I get confused every time I'm like, God damn it! Right, light <laughs> credits. It's, it's like it's like a mood room. Every time his mood changes, the color changes. <laughs> right now I'm angry, <laughs> and now right. I'm mellow. <laughs> they call you mellow yellow, quite rightly. And now well, we got to think. Oh yes, yeah, we gotta thank people. everyone. Uh, advisors, Omegas. Omegas, Artharon, and our ex our, our uh, executive producers. Yeah, they are. Oh, look at Bender, Barb Ramp, Scott, wow. Michelle, Mike, uh, Atomic S, Mike G. This this guy this over here. Mike G. Uh, oh, yeah, wow, uh, I'm in there. Drummer, Kohaku, George, Pebble, Tomaj, Unoid, our little Nicky fan, Abstraction, and our Sea Monsters, Renode L, Rider X Machina, Treadgills, Veritanuda, Justin Frostclaw, Nubin, David, Darkwing, and System T. Let's not forget our lovely semi-flammable death notes like Nova. Kate, Basil, Chad, Romero, Marcin, Renee, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Steven, Jill, Doom 2, Watt, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, Gametron, Dodger, Zathras, Gaming, Rook, Stern, Server, oh, it's too small, it's fine. Ah, I got one. M Fox Dog was in there. <laughs> Shout out to Foxy. And the Chairlings. Oh my god. Yeah. Where <laughs> Daniel Zinn, start? Ogiwan, Fellatio, Sacred Egg, Livet, Massavoni, Zeno, Belric, AJ, and the Fuck Buddies. Find upstanding camel. Cam camel. Cam camels? Yes. Find upstanding camel. She drives camel. me a camel. Don't drive camels, kids. All right. Don't punch trees either. <laughs> Only if but it's you in self-defense. You, you can punch camels and drive trees, though. Definitely. Stay tuned next week for how to defend against trees. Identify her one. We'll see you next week.
five dudes. <laughs>